6.15, we will open a public hearing to take public comments on a proposed document fee schedule. A copy of the fee schedule is here for the public if they'd like to look at it. Most of the documents are available on our website and can be printed on your own computer at no charge to you whatsoever. If you come into the office and ask for some assistance, there will be a, a minor charge as outlined on the fee schedule. Are there any public comments? And this is customary in other towns, right? We, oh, absolutely. Okay, I, I'm just going to report the question. But absolutely. And our fee schedule seemed to mirror what I saw in other towns. So it's, we're not doing anything unreasonable. We're doing what? It's based, it's based upon the cost that we incur locally to produce these documents. Sounds good. We'll, have to, we'll keep the hearing open for a few minutes to see if any more public up. This is a comment. Excellent. Okay. My comment is, it looks like, and I'm not positive yet because I just saw this, that this may be um, in conflict with 91A because you're saying under electronic documents per page. So if I ask for an electronic document, you're going to charge me 50, 50 cents per page. I don't think that's allowable, but you'd have to look into that. Thank you. Good comment. Now, I just, so the way this reading is, if I'm sending you electronic versions of a document, not printing it, there should be no charge assessed. Is that what you're saying? Or, or am I misunderstanding your, your Correct. Point? That is what I'm saying. Okay. That's the only problem I see with with anything on So if I have a PDF, my email is a PDF, you, your, your point is that there should be no charge with it. But if you ask me to print the PDF, then the, I would argue that the charge should go along with it, right? And that would be consistent with the, uh, with 91. Okay, make sure I understood. Thank you. If a PDF was available on the website, and you're asking someone to send it to you, and you get it yourself, See, I'm trying to think of how it is with medical records and the, the ability to charge those. Typically, if it's electronic and it's not electronic, I, I don't get charged. Anytime I get printing or uh, scanned onto a disc, that's when I get charged. So that's why I, I'm, I'm not. Sh that's why I'm not sure how this really works. I'm what this means is, if you ask us to print. An electronic document that we have, then there's a fee. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. And we should clarify that. That's the that's the intent there. Correct. And what I would also offer the uh, the county uh, already has a policy outlining that pretty accurately. All right, given that there's no more public input, we'll close the public input section. And uh, we heard one piece of input. 
with respect to electronic documents. So I suggest we put, if printing is, if local printing is required, mm -hmm. then the fee is 50 cents a page. Great. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That our uh, there was no other input, so I'll make a motion that we accept this fee schedule as the local fee schedule for the town of Brookfield. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 The public hearing is closed.
want to pay them and how much. Uh, I do have a person who's interested in doing the job. Um, and I have a couple other people that are also in, interested in helping out. So that's just a suggestion to you that we might want to give them some kind of thank you in terms of pay for being there all day. Which, which, what position are you talking about? The, the person who's standing at the bottom of the ramp greeting people, and I'm calling them greeters, and asking them to wear masks, trying to keep the flow into the building kind of in control also. Okay. Um, and will, will there be a mask available down there? Okay. Yes. Yeah. The state provided more masks than we could use. Um, and I, I think we will, might want to have a couple of signs outside, like an arrow pointing to the back door for people to know where to enter into the buildings. So if it's all right, I'll talk with Brad about getting a couple signs made up, the, you know, the, those plastic boards in the, in the metal, mm -hmm. things you poke in the ground. Is that all right? Yeah, I think we need to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I also, at the end of the ramp, now that if you're putting one on the front, I think we need a sign at the end of that saying exit only. So that's, uh, that's as far as I can see all the signs that I can't make. Yeah, I would do two exit only on each side of the ramp. For what I was out was, you know people. Yeah. Sorry, say it again. So, how's the ramp going to come off the, it's, it's going to go kind of perpendicular to the Without front. Eight, eight feet. And then turn towards this building for a ramp. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. We should do two exit only signs on each side of the ramp. Where you walk it up into it or at the end? Yeah, at the bottom of it. it, it yes. When you would come on, I would do it on both sides. Okay. All right. Just All like right so it. two of them. Fine. Yeah. You know, people. Yep. Yeah. We're all guilty of it, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, and uh, I did just meet with the people that uh, are going to be, some of the people that are going to be working the election. I think we're in good control, but I'm okay, anxious. Given, <laughs> <laughs> given the maturity of the volunteers and workers, have, has there been any reluctance to participate? None. Given people may or may not wear masks? None. I do have an issue to talk with the state about. They gave us sneeze guards, you know, the kind of thing, that's, it's a tabletop sneeze guard that has a hole in the bottom, they're passing papers back and forth. You can't see through them. So they're not going to be of much use. You use your protective? I took it off. You took it off. And, and you, you can't still... see through them. Is it just glare? Is that those? No, they're, they're so, opaque. Like no glass. Yeah. No. Doesn't make sense to me, but anyway, that's that's all I have. Okay. Um, we were talking about food. Well, we, oh. we, okay. So the issue with food is, mm -hmm. state says we can't have the buffet anymore. The buffet being pizza. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't have pizza. So the question is, do we do we want to buy individual simple sandwiches from Lino or someplace like that? A sandwich. Some simple bag lunch. Yes. Know. Can I say something? When we have beatings and clockers, they supply our lunch, and we, they give you a choice of maybe two or three different types, like maybe beef or tuna or chicken, and then we just tell them which ones we want, and they order them, and then just bring them all in. Say we need 20. Mm -hmm. Say 20 people. Well, less than $200? Yeah. So it's ten, that's $10 a bag. I was going to say that $10 a bag is not for Steve, so I think we'll be fine. I think so too. Yeah. With a $200 cap, I think we'll be more than fine. Okay. I will see him Friday morning when I have my coffee. Okay. And talk to him about details. Okay. Could 
I ask a question? How many people do you anticipate Rose will be in that election greeter position? Do you have any idea? I think um, at most two, although we're also talked about having a runner, so maybe three. Maybe, maybe three. We, we need a way to communicate from the bottom of the ramp to the town clerk. And right yeah. now we're thinking that that will be Jennifer. She volunteered to do that. So, so maybe three. Okay. And we have the lanyards from voting, so we're going to put the person's tag, name in the tag, so people will know who they are, other than about the, the election officials. Okay, we're going to still talk a little bit. You're talking three people. How much per hour do you think those people should be? Do you know what we pay the other election officials? Those are the counters. Have that right here, that sir. That's good. What do we pay the counters? <laughs> the counters would be good. That's like a volunteer job. The counters. Yeah. yeah. Um. So ballot clerks are, are different because they're appointed. So we pay them the 16 an hour. Um, I would think if you did eight to 10 hours, eight to 10 dollars an hour, you'd be safe. That's I don't. Like more than yeah. Were they expected to be paid? No. Okay, so what do we pay the counters? I wasn't answered there. I don't know. Do you always pay the counters? They're volunteers. They should get paid. I think, I, you know what? I'd have to go back and look. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't have it on this list. Um, I thought I did. Okay, would you get, get that number yeah. of hours? Yeah. I think in the range of no more than $10 an hour. Yeah. Yes, please, please. That's what I think the counters get. I think you need to go above seven just for minimum wage type thing, but they're not taxed because they're an election worker, but still. Okay. Seven, but you get exactly Yeah, I know Tom Brock's the count of that, but the number that was in my head, so. Why don't we make a motion that we uh, authorize $10 per hour per the support people? I made that motion. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Alright. Right. 725 is minimum wage. Okay, so we're going to go 10. Okay. As long as we're talking elections, I'd like to make another motion. I'd like to make a motion that Frank Frazier be appointed for the Democratic Party and Rob Collins for the Republican Party as inspectors of the election. And that term is good for, I believe, two years. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor of that motion? All right. All right. All right. And there, that's the motion there. Now let's keep going to election. We got coverage. What do we want to cover? Who wants to cover what? What do we usually do? I'm not there for. Three to seven. When's the election run? Eight to seven? Eight to seven. I'm not there. Okay. Three for us. Three to seven. So you're going to do? It starts at eight in the morning. So eight to, eight to noon? Sure. I'll take the close. Okay, and then I'll go at noon to, noon to three or four. All right. So three or four, I'll go later. Okay, that's fine. Okay. We got to set up. It's going to be a bear this year. Mm -hmm. We should set up at our convenience. It's been cleaned. So we just have to, and you'll want to be there to make sure we put all the shields in the right place. <laughs> um, I think mostly it's, there's things in there that, that we'll have to move out of the way to someplace fairly safe. Like all the all these benches, we'll probably need to get them up on the stage. The, all the chairs that are stacked um, at the entry to the schoolhouse. I think they need to be moved out of the way because that's where the ballot cl clerks will be sitting. Um, okay. And then 
So I think I have a good idea where I'd like to have the tables for the voting stations set up. So uh, I didn't do a count of what is left over from those number of tables I specified. We might need to find a place to stick those to. I'll get in the count to some measure. That's a good time. Go up to the election is the Tuesday after Labor, Labor Day. Great awkward day this year. Tuesday after Labor Day. So that's the eighth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're in there. We do it any way we want. Oh, see what we do Sunday. Of all of holiday weekend. That's yeah. all right with me. Yeah, that's all right. All right, let's say uh, what's one o'clock? Sure. One o'clock that Sunday we're going to be setting up. And you're going to be there too. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And let's see what else? If any young people want to volunteer to help. Yeah, we do. Um, the generator has been repaired, so it, it works properly when we have a power failure. But we have not done any annual maintenance on it. They did not change the oil or do any of that work. So it's time to schedule that. Who does that work? Aaron, Aaron, Dane. Aaron Dane. Aaron Dane. Let's schedule it better now than uh, yeah. in December. Right, I'm going to dig it up. Yeah. Where would you contact him? That is true. At his convenience. Just the annual maintenance, or we used to do it semi annually. I don't know the last time we touched it. I'm almost done. Uh, we have talked about putting a, a heat pump in this facility with air conditioning up here. Uh, we still have four heaters that need to be addressed. They're 20 years old. My take on it is after thinking about this, today we have very low propane costs because everything's on propane. If we go to electric on something, we have an increased electric bill and a higher propane, the higher per gallon propane bill because we'll stop using as much. Mm -hmm. It gets hot in here for two meetings a year. I would suggest, but we have to talk about it, I would suggest we just replace these four heaters State, current, current, state of the art, two <coughs> more years, and get on with it. This one's good. This one's good. I, I agree. Just um, update what we have, and we'll take it from there. Yeah, and the new one's good. I'm, I, but, yeah, I think that's the one that gets used the most is probably Lourdes and Virginia. And, and that one failed, right? It failed last year. Yeah. We the board put it. So, so yeah, let's just get all four of them, all four of these individuals replaced, and I say leave the big one alone. Okay. Okay. Good decision. Alright, so that's a motion? Yeah, I'll make that's a motion. Okay. Second. Aye. All in favor, aye. Yeah. Aye. Alright, I think that's everything I brought in, and then we can ask, we'll go through and ask, uh, Should be getting ready, I would assume, to pull their, if they're going to have warrant articles, pull them together. Cause they that, that's, all, that's all I'm going. Well, we, we, we got to have them for the town report, and we have to have the hearing, so they know that. That's right. Okay. It's going to be September. They have three meetings after that. Um, Heritage Commission, you don't have, do you have anything? No. No. Other than the plaster is going to come back in maybe November. Yep. Schedule permits. Okay. You didn't forget us, but we need to go somewhere else. And the roads are being worked? I've seen Clark is ground and looks like it's ready. It's been, it's been old once, loose. Right. They're grinding that today. Alright. And I see a lot of equipment out back. The roll, steam rollers, whatever they call rollers, and other yeah. equipment. Been going all around town. Whoa.
We were, yeah, we, we yeah, we ran yeah. out. Actually, we ran out of money. Yeah, yeah money. so we didn't shop that. Yeah. We spent it. Mary Lou's put ninety thousand into the trust fund. We're taking it right back out, spending it this year. So that trust fund will be close to zero. Mm -hmm. That will be okay for money through. I did a quick spreadsheet on where the money is. I I should be okay through November, as opposed to my original thoughts. Thank you for the update. Sure. Uh, Lori, you have any words? You ever get any feedback from White Mountain? Yeah, so I got in touch with them and they didn't require a contract. He thought that our email exchange was sufficient. That's what we did last year. Excellent. So, Good. The hand, a handshake, you know, that's nice and easy. <coughs> Good. We just want to remember to tell Ed we need to grab some buckets of blacktop to fill bottles in on Gunny. You doing that? Uh, I'm just trying to move them from mine to Saul in case we have a season first. But um, once we know the paving's going to start, I'll give them, I'll give them another heads up. Because they weren't even filling gravel like that, so. Yes. We did that. We, yes. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Anything? Yes, Virginia. Oh, I got it. Did you find out who owns the tree yet? Did you go down and look at it? Okay. There's Virginia reported that there's a tree down on Tucker Road, I guess. Is it Tucker Road? It, no, it's this side of the bridge. So it's, it's still Sanborn Road. Sanborn Road. It came from the left. When I'm looking at it, it came from the left. It's still over the, the road. But nobody can drive over it. Nobody can get stupid if they walk under it because you never know what could come down. I don't know whether it's Martin's, <coughs> but that's not up to me to find out. It's blocking a public way. Mm -hmm. Block crossing the road. It's blocking that old Tucker Road to eat. Still road. And yeah, he's going down. So we have to get it. And there's no power down there, so it's easy for them to take care of. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the power because they were there the next morning. Two trucks, and they left. So there is power down that section? It did not, the power did, that did not touch any power. Around our way, anyway, we lost power, but not from that. I just didn't know if it was lines that ran all the way down that road or not. Yeah, but I don't know where they came from or where they go. Okay. I didn't walk down there. They walked away because there was no power. Okay, okay. You want to talk to it? Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll remind them with the puddles and I'll tell them. There's a couple of the, things you could put on the end. The end of Tucker is the end of Tucker Road, is what I'm hearing. The other side. The other side. Oh, my side. Down by Piney. So on the Piney side, okay. Yeah. It's blocking the public way to the way put it correct. <clears throat> All right. We didn't need to build, read the bills on the record? Yep. I can't hear you. We're going to read the read bills. Read the bills on the record. She's going to read the bills. So I have a bill from Eversource for 124.62 and a second one for 22.19. The Spectrum bill is $79.98 and one from uh, Mitchell Municipal Group for $312.58. We have the annual request from Tri-County Community Action um, for the $4,000 that was approved um, with the town budget this year for their organization. And we also have a request from the Wakefield Food Pantry for their appropriation is $2,000. They are requesting $1,000 for the first installment and wrote in a letter with the tremendous outpouring of support from our communities and the stress on the town's finances, we won't be asking for the second half of the donation. Uh, level ramping solutions, a bill for $1,600 for the ramp for the election, Sandy Cap ramp. Um, I have um, applied to attend the budget workshop again this year. I haven't done it in a number of years. They've reduced the price to $65 from $100, so I thought it would be a good time. It's an um, online thing all day. So I thought it would be a good time to do that. And I also need two rolls of stamps at $110. And that's it. Make a motion to accept the bills of the record by Mary Lou. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we're talking budget. My only concern.
concern on the budget because it's coming in right where we forecast is we don't know what the state's going to do with their grant money this year. Yeah, that, that, we'll see. That could get us. I think we pick up about $50,000 a year in grant money. Yeah. So, over. Over, yeah. We'll see how that comes in. Yeah. And one of them doesn't come until the last week of the year. But Michelle will know what that number is. So. Because we're effectively getting ready to set the tax rate. We're going to put the MS1 in shortly, which is the right. inventory. And then we can uh, wait for Michelle to get back to us, so let's set the rate. And we can get our tax bills out early.